This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now another Proudly We Hail one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast-to-coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. We're especially pleased to present our Christmas program, an original play entitled Christmas Story. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment after this brief but important message. The United States Army and United States Air Force are expanding. Young men and young women with the will to learn can get ahead fast. So take advantage of the opportunities for advancement that can be yours by enlisting now. And I'd like to point out that every man and every woman in the United States has a definite part in the stepped-up program of national defense. And there's a special need for young women between 18 and 34 for service in the Women's Army Corps. You'll enjoy the gratifying feeling of satisfaction that comes in doing your part for your country during these critical times. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Talk to the local recruiter and learn all the facts. Volunteer today. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Gaius, your Army and your Air Force present the Proudly We Hail production, Christmas Story. (laughs) The road twisted and turned through the wild country leading ever southward. It was an old road that had known the passing of countless generations. It was a narrow road where a man's safety often depended on the numbers who traveled with him. After dark, it was an empty road where only madmen, beggars, and the unwary set foot. For it ran through a land in which the people were oppressed, poverty-stricken, and desperate. It ran through the land called Judah. Gaius, why do we tarry? The light will be gone in another hour. Uh, youth is always in a hurry. I'm not that young, my friend. We may ride this road as Romans during the light hours, but after darkness... I know, I know. We're not liked, are we, Marius? Liked? Liked by whom? The people here. You joke. You call the wretches who infest this broken land people? And what would you call them? <laughs> I have some choice names. You like to hear them? The yoke of the conqueror lies heavily on their shoulders. They not only hate us, they hate each other. And yet, even with Herod to rule them, their spirit is strong. Herod? (laughs) That fat-bellied pirate? I don't know why Augustus doesn't have him fed to the lion. Augustus sent me to this land to observe the people and their conditions, you know that. I gathered it from what you said. I've been here little more than a month. But it took me only a day to see that this was not a happy land. And yet there's a feeling here, a feeling I can't quite place, almost as though... (laughs) It's a feeling of not knowing when somebody's going to try and cut your throat. Uh, How long have you been stationed here, Marius? Four, five years? Five. And by Jupiter, I won't be sorry to leave. Have you learned anything about these people in that time? Yes, Gaius, I have. And the fact that I'm still alive proves it. Now, you may be my superior in years and position, but I insist that we put speed to our mounts. Where do we stop this night? I know of an inn that's not too bad. It lies in the city ahead, the city of David, a place called uh, Bethlehem. Innkeeper, bring more wine here. Lost in thought, Gaius? 
Observing, Murray, is observing. He does a thriving business, this one. Must be one of their pilgrimages. They're always having them for one thing or another. They have but one god. And it is not of stone as ours are. And that alone should give you an idea of the madness that runs in their veins. Innkeeper, why so crowded this night? Gracious sir, Caesar has decreed that all must sign the royal register. Man, woman, and child. They come to... Ah, the... that's it. Now I recall... All right, put the wine down and go. Yes, there was talk of this at Herod's court that slipped my mind. Well, mine as well. Well, you'll have plenty of chance to observe the people now, Gaius. A stroke of luck. More wine? No, no, I've had enough. Poison? <laughs> but one must like his thirst. Yes, yes, of course. <sighs> Gaius, what is it? What's come over you? Are you ill? You're not yourself. Uh, sorry, Marius. I'm not very good company, am I? My... My thoughts will not let me rest. Thoughts of what? They're not easily explained. Oh? Huh? Perhaps I'm weary of life. Rome is great. Rome is powerful. Augustus is just. And I am a successful and honored man. Still... Is there anything else a man could wish for, Gaius? I don't know. Probably not, and that may be one reason for my mood. I'm... I'm like a man searching for something and not knowing what it is. But I've never felt it so strongly as here. Perhaps you're homesick for Rome. Sick of Rome, huh? Marius. Huh. I shock you. But in my heart, I'm sick of it. Sick of its riches, its power, its decadence. Sick of its gods. You speak blasphemy. I speak what is in my mind. Then I would speak it softly, lest we are overheard. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> One must be cautious at all times. This land has affected you evilly, Gaius. It does that to some. It's affected me, I'll grant you that. I wish I knew why. I think I'll go for a walk. <laughs> Care to join me? Do you want to be found in the gutter in the morning? <laughs> Conquerors who are afraid to step out of doors after dark, eh? I'll take my chances. By Zeus, you're hard on a man's patience. Stay here then and drink your wine. I'll be all right. Well, if anything happened to you, Augustus would have my hide. You, me, you, I must. Come. We'll go stumble around in the dark and dare the knives of beggars. Well, they watch us like jackals waiting to strike. And were you one of them, how would you watch us? What would you have me do, stand here and freeze? It was darker and more chill at every breath. I have never seen a night so dark, so quiet. All the more reason for us to get back inside. Do you... Do you have the feeling as though everything was holding its breath? I do not. I have the feeling that you've lost your mind and need a physician. What do you plan to do, stand out on this hill all night? The only light seems to be coming from the inn down there. Well, Augustus can hang me up by my heels... But that's just where I'm heading, with or without you. Enough, Marius. Come, we'll go back. I've been a poor friend, I'm afraid. An uncommon strange one this night. Yes, it's true. I am not myself. If by morning you're not recovered, I'll summon a physician. To conjure the evil spirits from me, eh? Well, watch your step. To conjure I know not what from you. Perhaps I can breathe freely again. The gods have favored us, although I know not why. A welcome light in all the darkness. I wonder, Marius. Hold, hold. If... Someone comes. And from behind, I like it not. Calm yourself. We're but a stone's throw from the inn. No one would dare attack us here. So you think? We'll stand in this alley until whoever it is passes. Do you think if they meant us harm, they would announce their coming? I tell you, you don't know these people. Please do as I say, Gaius. Oh, as you wish, but I... Quiet. They come. Mm. 
Brigands, eh? Cutthroats. Thieves in the night. Well, a man and his woman riding a donkey. A fine thing for two proud Romans to be afraid of. Scoff if you like, Gaius, but if you Look. knew these... Look, they go to the same inn as we. Come along, we'll have a better look at these dangerous people. Well, because I take precautions for your safety, there's no reason to mock me. I do not mean to mock you, Marius. I think you overcautious, that's all. Well, they could come from the moon, for all of me. Who knocks at this hour? We seek lodging for the night. Well, seek elsewhere. There's no room here. I'm filled up. My wife, her time is near. Tell me not your troubles. I have more than enough of my own. There is no place you could put us. None. No, be gone. Night air is chill. Could you tell us... I can tell you nothing but to go away and seek elsewhere. Hold, hold there. Who speaks? Oh, sir, I, I did not see you. I, I was... Uh, you have no room for these people? None, I swear it. Even the floor space is taken. I saw clean hay in your stable. What about that? Why can't they stay there? Stable? Well, I have not thought that... If you would care to stay there, why... Well, we shall stay and gladly. I thank you, sir. No need. It's a dark night and cold. Let us go in, Marius. are listening to the special Proudly We Hail Christmas program presented by your Army and your Air Force, an original play entitled Christmas Story. Now with your star Conrad Nagel in the role of Gaius, here is the second act. Marius, what is it? Can't you sleep? Oh, I, I'm sorry if I woke you, Marius. I was asleep. I had a strange dream. I can't remember it very well, but it woke me, and now sleep will not come. Should have drunk more wine. Oh, oh Gaius, what am I going to do with you? The best thing is to stop worrying. <laughs> the innkeeper nearly fell over in a fit when you spoke up. Since when has a Roman gone out of his way to assist the rabble? Oh, how blind you are. Huh? They were not rabble. The man had a fine face and the woman was beautiful to look upon, not like other women. Because their clothes were poor, does that make them rabble? Uh, get some sleep, Gaius. We have a long way to travel tomorrow. <laughs> If I keep my eyes shut tight, perhaps sleep will come. I should be tired, and yet I'm not. For there's no shutting out my thoughts. Why? Why do I feel this way? My life passing before me like an empty vessel on a dark sea. Could Marius be right? Is this land full of demons that drive a man to madness? What manner of people are these that go around in ranks, broken, and yet look skyward to a god of strength and mercy? Strength and mercy. How does one beget the other? The merciful are weak and oppressed. And the strong are without mercy, hated. That man and his wife, he had no fear of me. Yet neither was there hate in his eye. I believe he was grateful. And the woman, it seemed she smiled on me. There was warmth in it. 
And were I not a Roman, a conqueror, I might know them and be their friend. It must be cold in that stable. It... <gasps> now, by all the gods, what magic is this? Marius. Marius, wake up. Wake up, man. Marius! Uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the matter, Gaius? Uh, stop shaking me like I was a rag doll. Look. Look at the light out there. Huh? Here, calm yourself, Gaius. You've been dreaming again. I have not been dreaming. What is that light? Where did it come from? Ah, it's only the moon. you never seen the moon, Gaius? Now sit down here. Look at you. You're shaking. I, I was lying there thinking. I opened my eyes and suddenly the room was filled with a strange light. Have you ever known the moon to shine so brightly? Oh, on such a dark night, it always seems to shine brightly. There is no moon tonight. Huh? There was no moon last night. You'll recall we mentioned it. Well, well, well we must have been wrong. Well, what else could it be? I don't know. This window is too small to see. What are you doing? I'm going outside to have a look. Are you mad? I told you I was lying there and it filled the room. I know, I know. It came out of the clouds. You know how dark it's been. I tell you, the moon never made a light like this. If you don't lower your voice, you'll wake everyone in the inn. They'll think you've gone mad, too. Think as you like. I'm going out. All right, all right. We'll go outside. We'll look at the moon. And then we'll come back here. And if you disturb me once more this night, Gaius, I swear by Jupiter, I'll... Well, I'll tie you to your bed. When... When it happened, it was as though I heard voices, a great many voices, singing. Now tell me it's the moon. Black magic. It's witchery. Oh. The gods are angry. No. No. Your marble gods have not to do with this. It's the end of the world. That star is falling right on us. It falls not but hangs over us. There is peace in its light. There is no evil here. Only goodness. And I am not afraid. What? What can it mean? There must be a meaning. No star ever shone so brightly. Or so close. I know not the meaning. But the trouble is gone from my heart. Huh? Gaze. Look there. Others come. Be on your guard. Down from the hills. They must be shepherds, and they seem in a hurry. Perhaps they know the meaning. How could such ignorant beggars know anything? Stay clear of them, I say. Oh, Marius, Marius, when will you learn? When will you... Uh, will you come with me, or will you stay here and tremble? I'm as brave as any man. Then take your hand from your sword and come. Mm. Oh, good friends, wait. Wait for us. But good friends, indeed. They'll run like rabbits when they see the color of our cloth. Let's hope not. Well, they seem to be waiting for us. And in this light, they can see your helmet. Too frightened to run now. Watch them grovel at your feet and say nothing. We mean no harm. But we'll have words with you. Oh, please, please, do not be afraid. We fear not. When you address a Roman... Marius, be still. You... You are shepherds? Yes. We are shepherds. Our flocks are in the fields above. And you leave them without protection? They are safe. The Lord watches them. No harm can come to them. May... May I ask what you do here? Well? Speak up when you're spoken to. Marius. Mm. Good shepherds. We, we could not sleep. The light woke us. 
Know you its meaning, its true meaning? You're a Roman. You wouldn't believe our words. Forget my race if you can. I'm a man like yourself, and I would know. It is news that all should know, even a Roman. Tell him. So be it. You ask of the light. We, too, saw it and did not completely understand. At first, we, we were afraid. Well? Because of our faith, we lost our fear. It was written long ago by the prophet Isaiah that great things would come to pass in the city of David to those who watched in the fields. The prophet wrote that the light would bring glad tidings for all the world. This night, as on all others, we were keeping watch over our flock. Darkness is like a great black cloak. Even the fire gives no light. Never has it been so quiet. Even our charges are silent. They bleat not, yet they sleep not. To see just one star, the jackals are hushed. Who has known a night when the jackals did not cry? Eh, the night will pass, no matter how dark or how quiet. Our brethren in the next field, they too heard it. And they're not blind or deaf. You must not fear. Easily said. Aye, but the heart beats another tune. The Lord watches over us. If you like, I shall say David's psalm. Say it. my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I love Your words are music in the heart of the weary, but the darkness is no less. And the silence grows. And what is there in either to harm us? The light! The light! What has happened? Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this is the sign unto you. He shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Lying in a manger. And know you where to find this manger? The star shines over it. I can take you to the exact Place. Gaius, don't tell me you believe the raving of... Marius, be silent. Either be silent or go back to your bed. Now, friends, if you will follow me, I think I can lead you to the place you seek. The babe was wrapped in swaddling clothes. How, how could they know? They told you how they knew. Do you not know the truth when you hear it? But, but it is beyond belief. No, Marius. No, it is not beyond my belief now. They knelt and, and worshipped the child. Yes. Emmanuel, they called him. God with us. I... I don't understand. Nor I completely, Marius. But I have a feeling like none I've ever known. That this night will be remembered. Remembered long after we are dust. Something has happened here this night. Not meant for any one race or people. But for all mankind. From this day forward.
ladies and gentlemen, here speaking for the men and women of your Army and your Air Force is our distinguished star, Mr. Conrad Nagel. Well, friends, frankly, I, I can't tell you all what it means for me to be the spokesman for the men and women of our Army and our Air Force and extend to you their best wishes for Christmas 1951. You know, many things have been said many ways about what we all believe in and are willing to fight to keep. At this season, it seems to me that, well, that one of the important reasons for our feeling as we all do about our way of life is that here in our country, we can say, Merry Christmas and mean it. Christmas is always wonderful, of course. But it seems to me at this time in all our lives, it means more than ever to all of us. More even than the mystic magic that always comes with Christmas. For I feel that Christmas has come to symbolize what we and our fighting forces stand for throughout the entire world. The men and women of our armed forces are serving and fighting to maintain the truths that were written long ago. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace goodwill toward men. And so, friends, speaking for all of us on Proudly We Hail and as spokesman for our Army and our Air Force, the happiest of Christmases to you all. This has been the special Christmas program on Proudly We Hail presented transcribed coast to coast by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly we hail stars Conrad Nagel. This is Kenneth Banghart joining Conrad Nagel and speaking for all of us on Proudly We Hail, wishing you all a very Merry Christmas.